Every technology around the world that has kind of taken off has figured out how to tap into an inefficiency or an information gap. And, and for some reason, transportation, we didn't think these existed even though they were pervasive. Every day, we ignore a surplus of transportation capacity, especially when 85% of cars have only one person in them. Nearly every car on the road is full of empty seats, ready for passengers. So for decades, people have tried to achieve the vision of filling the empty seats in cars. It was tried during the 1940s, during World War II, during the 1970s, during the fuel crisis. And yet, they've never been able to get the level of mainstream adoption with carpooling that you really need to make a difference. That a lot of times was being driven by information gaps, not by unwillingness of people to, to travel with other people. The term in aviation is load factor. So I think if you can start to really expand the load factor of the single occupant vehicle and start to have one, two, three more people in the car, it's a classic opportunity to absorb that excess supply with technology. Hitchhiking used to be a way to fill up seats in cars. You didn't see, or at least you didn't hear about about heinous things happening to people as much. So people would hitchhike. Now, recently, with the social media aspect of the network companies, you feel like you're not just out there on your own. To enable true carpooling, it needs to be easy for drivers and passengers to find each other. And you need that perfect snowflake of a match of someone who's starting at the same place and going to the same place, and the sheer probability that there is a match like that in a one-minute interval when you request a ride is really, really low if you only have a few people in the system. We are getting increasingly close to having robust data sets about where, when, and how people are traveling. People's willingness to participate in things like Waze and a lot of these other technologies, these, these are providing information and data sets that, you know, like five years ago, governments would have dreamed to be able to get access to. So driving is changing very rapidly right now. We're in an exciting time where a lot of new technologies are coming out, and we're right on the cusp of those technologies beginning to converge. Every car pretty much now is getting an internet connection and able to communicate. We have you know, Tesla proving that electric cars can be cool and fun and high performance. We have Google and many other companies now developing autonomous cars that drive themselves. Then we have Uber and other uh, sharing companies demonstrating that you can actually share rides. In the future, those will combine. So we have an electric shared autonomous car. I call it ACES, which is a, an automated car that drives electrically, that multiple people can share, that can pick up and drop off passengers along the way. So think of it as a new mode that really sits between private car ownership and public transit. If new technologies can take even a few cars off the road, we may see dramatic reductions in congestion. We have things set up now like Soviet bread lines. Everyone's crowding into the highway because it's free. And it doesn't ch take that much change to, to increase traffic flow at peak times. If you just have a small percentage of people choosing, you know, I'll go a little later, I'll go a little earlier, I'll take mass transit, I'll bike. All of a sudden, you free up uh, the conditions on the roadway right, pretty dramatically. Ultimately, the success of transportation advancement will be judged on its ability to produce efficient behavior. You have to reduce the number of people driving alone. The alternative is to widen the roads. Within a few years, most roads that are widened because of induced demand fill up and you have the same problem over and over again unless you make some behavior modification. Actually, there's lots of applications on the market today that already are excellent at optimizing capacity. The challenge is not the technology, the challenge is human behavior. I think the future holds a lot of change that we can't necessarily see today with generation changes, millennials wanting to live in cities and be more car free. And ultimately, I think we'll have a much lower car ownership in America 10, 20 years from now.